up. So the next step here, and I'm going to just show you my uh, notes page and uh, everything that uh, we've got done so far, pretty much to step number four. So we want to assign the scale. And after we assign the scale, then we're going to align the details. The scale is, is a very important part of getting the model out on that plot sheet being something that you can throw a triangular scale down onto and come out with some good information. And what we want to tell Rhino is this. In one unit on this layout, how many units do we have in the model? Okay, so we're going to we're going to tell Rhino in one unit on the layout, how many units do we have here in the model? Okay? Do we have 2 units or 5 units or 96 units? That's what we do when we set a detail to a scale. So we want to tell Rhino in every one unit on the layout how many model units are in this detail. There's usually one detail that we call the control. That's the one that is going to determine what the scale is. And there may be more than one, but in this case, it's the front or the side view of the water bottle. Okay, so I'm going to pick on this detail and I'm going to go over here to properties and to the detail page. And notice this. In every one unit, which is inches in this case on the layout, we have 2.43 model units. You're never going to find a triangular scale that does 2.43 units. So we need to put it into an integer that actually makes sense. Sometimes it will ma matter, other times it won't. You just want to get them the same scale no, no matter what this number is. But for this model, I want to show the views of the water bottle at half scale. So to every one unit that I have on the layout, I want two units in the model. So let's do this one. That one's a little bit closer, but I'm going to true it up. One to two. And this one here, again, a little bit closer, but we're going to set them to scale. Now that the details are to scale, we can start arranging them and, and lining them up. The uh, details that we have here for the front and the, uh, and the right view aren't big enough. So we can find a couple ways that we can stretch these out. After we stretch them out, though, we don't want to hit the wheel on the mouse. We want to be careful when we make that detail active to pan and not zoom. And I'm going to line them up precisely here in a moment, but I just want to get them looking, you know, as good as I can do uh, by eyeballing. This one may be a little bit big. We can bring that down. Even though it looks like I'm scaling the detail, I'm not. And I can check it, and it's still 1 to 2. Okay, 1 to 2, 1 to 2. But there's, at some, there's some point when you're setting the display and the scale that you want to lock the details. And when you lock the details, you can't zoom them to change their scale. You also can't pan them, so you don't want to do this too soon. Otherwise, you won't be able to continue with the arranging of your detail. But take a look at what happens now. When I double click on it and I hit the wheel, I zoom on the layout, not in the detail. And that's true of all of these now. So we can move on to kind of the next step in the layout, which is uh, getting dimensions and text on, uh, on the object. And so when I zoom in to pick the start of a dimension point, I don't have to worry about changing the scale. Next thing I want to do is uh, assign shaded to uh, each of these. This is one of my wish list uh, items. I'd like to be able to do that all at the same time. And to this detail, I want to turn off the dimension layer. 